Good morning, and thank you. So I was so proud of my presentation, and uh, when I was in the backstage, I was just questioning if you know anything about Blockbuster, because the the girl, I hope, because it's she is too young, uh, she has never heard about Blockbuster. So I, I'm not sure. Do you know this brand, Blockbuster? Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay, so I can start. Okay, so it's uh, Blockbuster is a nice story, not not so nice actually, but. It's about being in the comfort zone. When you are in your comfort zone, Blockbuster was a, a retailer, a huge retailer, growing, growing, growing. Maybe it, uh, the risk is that you don't consider, don't realize that the world is changing around you. So probably they were uh, sitting in their rooms and saying, OK, I'm selling a lot of products. I'm, uh, I'm doing well. But everything around was going to change. And probably they were afraid of the future. They were fearing the change, maybe, and say, OK, that's working. While what I want to say and what we have learned from this lesson is that you have to own the change. You don't have to fear the change. I'm going to talk about the future. So we, we don't have a, a time machine yet, not for the moment. but. We can consider the future in a different way. I think that the right approach is really to call the future with a different name, which is, for instance, present continuous. Present continuous is a future, is a kind of future that happens while you're talking. It's not something you wait for. It's not something that can um, make you worry about, because it's just happening. But you have to listen to understand you are in the future. So today, I'm going to give you three points of view. The first one is, to me, the future is present continuous. It's going on. What, what, what does it fit with the future? OK, is there any thief in this room? No one. We're, we're lucky. But maybe, let's say to him, if I ask you, did you stop stealing in the apartment? If I ask him, did you stop stealing in the apartment? What is people thinking around him? That he uh, used to be a thief. I don't know him. Eh? But it's, it's just to say that sometimes the way you ask the question is already containing a message you want to give to, to the people. Why I'm telling you this? Because this is a sentence by the um, managing director of Accenture Interactive saying, we need now today about the advertising, future advertising, we have to become more responsible for business goals, not just for brand goals. And, and uh, yet something else. Huh? I have a, a, a quote, another quote, which is, um, we don't believe brands are built on, from advertising anymore. They are built from an amalgamation of customer experience. This is Mr. Whipple, which is a senior managing director of Accenture. So if they say this, this way, if you say this this way, you are pretending that before we advertise, I, I hope we are in a place where I have a lot of advertiser here and a few consultants, maybe. It, it means we were not used to work around uh, business goals, just brand goals. But this is a story. Um, this comes from the early uh, 19th century. It's by Claude Hopkins. Claude Hopkins uh, is uh, the father of uh, scientific advertising. And uh, this is a, a, an ad made uh, for Pepsodent. It's part of the history of advertising. And um, you can do the, the test if you want, uh, your tongue test. It's, uh, sometimes I, I take this to just to explain what is the USP, the, the finding something different in a product, or positioning it differently. So this is a, a toothpaste. And he said, I want to sell it by asking people to try this effect with their tongue 
And if they don't feel so comfortable, they will try Pepsodent and they will fix it. So it's a reason why to buy the product. It's about giving reasons to people to buy. And um, the nice story is that Claude Hopkins didn't want to be paid for this uh, campaign. He went to the manager, of, to the CEO of Pepsodent, and he said, why don't you give me some shares of your company instead of paying my bill? Because I trust this advertising. I think we are going to do something really powerful. And they made the deal. And Claude Hopkins is famous as an advertiser, but is also famous as a millionaire because the campaign worked. And by the way, Claude Hopkins was or, or also the, the, the man that for the first time, probably, in the history book is written like this. He was uh, using an event to create advertising. He was trying to sell a product that was uh, not butter. I, I don't know exactly the name uh, in English. But it's, it was uh, an alternative to butter to make cakes. So he invited people to look at the biggest cake ever in, the squ in a square in um, the US, and he had 100,000 people attending the event, looking how this, part, this, this product was able to create huge cakes instead of butter. That was really experienced marketing. So because another point that we are going to see is uh, that this new world is about brand experience. Uh, I wrote it, uh, then advertising. But what's the difference? Another part of the, um, of, of, of the speeches of this kind of new way of uh, seeing our world, saying that the advertising world is going to in a bad shape, is that uh, we are used as advertisers to use uh, lies, but now people want truth. So that's why I go back again in the 50s with this, um, with this ad by Bill Berbach for Avis, which was uh, once again a, a masterpiece in the history of advertising because he was just saying that Avis, the rent-a-car brand, was just number two in a market where Hertz was number one by far. And they said, OK, this is my position. Let's make it a competitive advantage. And he wrote this that is still now, if you go to Avis now, it's uh, we try harder. It comes from the 50s. So it's something that really changed the brand, and, but by using the truth, not lying, not inventing something what, which was not existing. And not to, to stay in the very past, this is quite recent by Microsoft. I let you see this video, and I will tell you something. My name is Grover. Sean. My name is Ian. I'm Taylor. My name is Owen, and I am nine and a half years old. So Owen was born with a rare genetic disorder called Escobar Syndrome. He's had 33 surgeries to date. I love video games, my friends, my family, and again video games. It's his way of interacting with his friends when he can't physically otherwise do it. What I like about the adaptive controller is now everyone can play. And you can just say, all right, that's that button, that's that button, that's that button. Perfect. One of the biggest fears early on is, how will Owen be viewed by the other kids? <laughs> He's not different when he plays. No matter how your body is or how fast you are, you can play. It's a really good thing to have in this world. So this is a, an advertising campaign, but it's based on a product. The idea, the product is Microsoft that created this console to, to, pass a, to, to create a new product, but also to pass a message. It's a brand message, and it comes from the experience and the emotion you can give by building something, which is an experience that people playing. It's not only telling advertising stories. And this is made, the idea comes from uh, McCann USA. So it's a creative agency, uh, advertising agency. So when people say everybody, everything is changing, sorry, everything is changing, my point of view is uh, it's changing the what, because we have seen what we do. It's different. It's 
also different how we do things, because the, a lot of channels means uh, digital technology, etc. But it's not changing the why. And the why is exactly the part that makes people choose a product or another. It has always been like this. So my point of view is that it's changed, a lot is changing around, but nothing is changed in the meaning of what we do. And I have another example for you, which is coming from um, Burger King. Maybe you have seen this because it's, it has been quite viral. Um, let's see it. In France, Burger King has 45 restaurants, while McDonald's, 1,300. Basically, they're everywhere. But, surprisingly, on the 24th of February, McDonald's launched this web video. Three days later, we posted this tweet. And this video. Un café, s'il vous plaît. Un petit ou un grand Grand, grand, ouais. On a de la route, en fait. Voilà. Et merci. Paf Il contre-attaque hier Nouvelle pub. Et ça a été très très drôle. Il faut se méfier de la réponse de son concurrent. C'est ce qui s'appelle se faire prendre à son propre piège. C'est un peu l'arroseur arrosé. Quand on aime, on ne compte pas. Aujourd'hui. Anyway, this, the why of this was exactly I am Burger King. I am uh, smaller than McDonald's. I have a fewer points of sales, but I can be, I can use this to my advantage. So in a different way, which was a video, a digital video. They did the same thing, so it's about the same why. Last this year at the Cannes Lions Festival, they won a Grand Prix with this other campaign. Burger King wants you to come here. Yes to McDonald's. Burger King is trolling its fast food rival with a promotion available through the Burger King mobile app. Yeah, but there is a small catch. So I saw this Burger King commercial where you can get a Whopper for a penny. Only if you open the app while you're at McDonald's. That doesn't even make sense. You, you have to go to McDonald's for a Whopper? Whopper? Use Burger King's BK app, then be within 600 feet of a McDonald's restaurant. Burger King geofenced over 14,000. 14,000 McDonald's restaurants in the U.S. Unbelievable. So I parked my news car about 100 feet from a McDonald's. I'm at McDonald's getting a coupon for Burger King. I almost feel like I'm stealing. Let's go for the unlock. Yes! Ah. You unlock the Whopper detour. This is a really cool promo, guys. How fun is this? <laughs> This is an amazing use of technology to get consumers out of a rival store and into your own store. Can you do a Whopper Junior? They probably could make that. It wouldn't be as good as Burger King would, to be honest with you. Okay, where's the Burger King? Like four blocks to your left. Okay, so it's... Uh... 37 times the return on investments. 
And this is a, a campaign, again, it's uh, creativity, it's advertising, it's a promo, it's uh, experience, it's uh, whatever, you can call it whatever you want, but it works. It's about business results, it's not about only about brand results, but at the same time it's brand, because I think everybody after this and all this stuff that Burger King is, do is doing, we think B Burger King brand is a cool brand. So, um, this guy, this guy used to be a copywriter. He left J. Walter Thompson in uh, 1963 because he had something more interesting to do. Something like uh, winning a Nobel Prize. And because this guy is uh, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. He used to be a copywriter. And so the point is, uh, if a copywriter can become a Nobel Prize winner, probably it's not so hard to become a consultant if the world is going through the consultancy side. Consultants, consultants, they have access to the big CEO of the companies, so it's good to be a consultant. Usually, not always, but usually, they are much more paid than uh, copywriters and advertisers. So consult the, I, I'd love to be a consultant, in a way. So the question is, is the creative, the advertiser of the future, a consultant? To, to answer to this, uh, I want to go once again back in the past, in this case, to tell you the story of this lady, um, Miss Wells, Miss Mary Wells Lawrence, she, she was an advertiser. She, was, uh, work, she, she used to work uh, for DDB in the US. And the story is about the one client, one specific client, which was Braniff Airlines. Braniff Airlines called her to say, I want to advertise my flights, my airline. Uh, and she went to the briefing and she is started asking questions such as, um, what's your difference? Are your, they were at the airport, so what's, do you have different um, ro routes? Do you have different fares? Do you have different, uh, no, it's almost the same. You have something specific with your um, flight? No, it's one American company. Okay, but look at the, airplanes, they are all the same, they are all silver, all, this is United Airlines, this is Braniff, this is, can't we paint the planes, the aircraft? Um, ye yes, maybe we can. And I have a friend, is uh, Emilio Pucci, a stylist, uh, Italian, can we ask him to draw the um, dresses for your hostess and stewards? Um, yes, why not, we can. Okay, let's do it. So, they did it. Braniff painted all differently, every aircraft. They created the Pucci dresses for the hostess, and they launched a campaign with a title, a nice title by copywriter, The End of Plain Plain. Yes, it's cool, if you're a copywriter, you, you can appreciate this. But this piece of creativity by Mary Wells, it's not a single piece of creativity, it's working together with the client on these objectives, using creativity, having a change of mind, a mindset, saying, let's do this. And if we talk about brand experience, once again, they advertise the Braniff style, not only the Braniff Airlines, saying, why you have to choose Braniff instead of United Airlines or whatever? because you will have a different experience. You will fly in a colored, you see the dresses of the hostess, in a colored, different mood, and they have, everything was different about the experience. And it comes from an advertising girl. So, can a, an advertiser be a consultant? Is the advertising consultant in the future? I think so, I think so, because the focus on business is more and more and more important. But I think it's not a, a battle against advertising, people and consultant. It's just using our, the power of creativity to, uh, to, to serve our clients and to serve this way. Another point, important point, is data, of course. 
Data, it's important. It's all about data. It's about data and creativity, media and creativity. And uh, yes, it's true. Once again, I think it's true. It's so true. I, I, I really, really believe this so much that I sold my company. I founded uh, an advertising company some years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, at last year, I sold my company to Dentsu, Dentsu Group, for one reason. We were in a perfect shape. We were growing, growing. It was really nice working at, at our agency, but I felt that we missed data. Data is something big, it's huge. It's not only looking for researches online, it's really having access to big data, to big information, uh, having the chance to work together with technologists, analysts, all together. That's why I think the future of our, our job is uh, data and creativity. But still, data, you have to be able to read data. D data is not technology. Data is something interesting, it's a tool, but you have to learn to use the tool. Let's look at this, this, this picture. I want to tell you that the more margarina, margarine you eat, the more you will divorce. That, it comes from data. You can see. I can tell you by 99.26%, I'm sure 99.26%, because there is a, a strong correlation of this data. OK, you're not trusting me. It's quite easy for you not to trust me, because it makes no sense. It's just by chance, of course. But if I go to this, maybe, it's a little bit more tricky, because if I tell you that we are importing, the US are importing more olive oil because the consumption of chicken is increased, you can say, OK, so people use oil on chicken. It's more, it's fake, it's a fake. But the data are right, huh? but the, the, the conclusion is a fake. But it's a fake that maybe you can believe. If I'm really trying to sell you this idea, maybe I, I, I will be able to do it. Because it's, it's a fake, but credible, let's say. A little bit more credible than the, the one before. So what's the point? Is that, luckily, what we need to read data, not only to read data, but to have an idea to progress to innovate in the creativity, in the advertising field, we have to have brains. We have to have people that think, like this uh, uh, strategic planner from uh, Hellas, uh, which is Socrates. Um, he used to go and ask people and doubt. So I see the, some data, but I, have not, I don't take anything for granted. I want to ask more questions, to understand, to use data to let my brain work more and more and more, not just saying, OK, this is. So it's, it's really different. And another point about statistics and data, it's what another giant told us, is Bill Berbach, saying that if we continue measuring everything we do and we use that measurement to create something else, probably we forget that we have the power, the creativity has the power to create new statistics, something that you cannot measure today because it doesn't exist. Nobody invented it. And you can do it with the power of creativity. So, future is data and creativity, but the future belongs to cultured and brave creative. So I, I really, I'm quite optimist in this environment. I think that good, creatives, which are cultural, because it's not only having the, the nice idea once, but knowing, studying, going deeper in the things, and being brave, having the, the courage to do things, new things, they are going to be at the top level as they are even more than before. Let's look, have a look at this video. You, you have probably seen it thousands of times, but it's nice.
I, I put this video in all my presentation. I always find a way to put it, even if it's not on the topic. But in this case, <laughs> the, the reason why I put this is because uh, it's a fantastic ad, but it's uh, by David Droga. And David Droga just sold his company to last year to Accenture. I have nothing against Accenture. I'm always talking about Accenture, but it's just another word. That's my point, that Accenture, the consultancy agencies, structure, industry, is quite different from the creative one. They can be good, and they are good, both. I'm not saying one is better than the other. They are both good, but they, I'm, this is my personal point of view, they are not going to mix really easily, because they are too different. They will stay in the same class, but they will not mix, because they are so different. And someone thinks that the, the link is the technology, because uh, creatives, as I told you, need data, technology. It's more and more technology-driven, the creativity, for sure. I'm not saying it's not. And uh, this kind of companies, they are technology-driven. It's true. But it's not, they are not using technology the same way. I think that they are not. And I think that the main characteristics uh, characteristic of uh, the, this consultant consultancy firms is process. It's processes. They have processes for everything. That's why they are so good. They are so reassuring clients. They are so big. They are really good in this. But processes, it's something that can stop creativity, can be a, a cage for creativity. Let's try to ask uh, um, Mr. Droga how long will it take to create an idea for a TVC like that? Or better, Mr. Droga, Mr. David Droga, can you work out to have an idea in 3.25 minutes, 3 hours, 25 minutes, please? Because this is what I sold to the client. I don't think it's going to work. It's a different way of working. It's a different approach. So data is fine. Processes is the opposite of what Creative World is doing. I'm not saying creative are anarchists that can do anything they want, but it's different minds, to totally different minds. So, <coughs> sorry, having said all, <laughs> it's strong. Having said all, all of this, um, my last point, my last slide for you is a curse. A curse, it's, um, I'm not a bad boy, but I leave you with a curse, which is the Chinese curse which comes from a, a place, China, where they used to love, they love pe the peace, peaceful times, flat times, where no nothing happens. So this comes from the ancient times, when they um, wanted to tell to their enemies, may you live in interesting times, because interesting times are chaotic. It's a problem, a lot of problems, a lot of things changing, a lot of confusion. So it was, okay, you are my, my enemy, can you live in interesting times? I think, and this is also the, the title of the Biennale, uh, Biennale di Venezia, Biennale um, exhibition in Venice this year, because art and creativity can live fantastic times when times are difficult, when times are interesting. So I want to ask you to live and um, wish you to live in interesting times. These are interesting times, considering interesting as really interesting and not difficult, not just difficult. So thank you. <laughs>